Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Viviana. I'm the community archaeologist at the Plui Pavis Archaeological Trust. Although I would like to stress the fact that every single member of the Trust is highly dedicated to outreach and, and public engagement. So this is something that uh, um, I'm really, really keen on sharing with you, especially after all the things that's been said this morning. I can assure this is a common element for all the four Trusts in, uh, in Wales. Um, this is just a quick view of the region that uh, the area that the Cluy Pavis Archaeological Trust uh, covers. So we have been looking at the whole, the whole Pawis, uh, Wrexham, Denbyshire, Flintshire, and the east side of Conway. So if you, as you do realise, it, it's quite a large area with a lot of rural communities. Uh, and later on, our director will talk a little bit more about this, this topic. Uh, um, outreach, uh, education, and engagement uh, are among the core values uh, of uh, our organisation. Um, and the, the activities and initiatives uh, that we develop are really aiming to create a bridge between our profession and local communities. Uh, creating a bridge, but at the same time to build a bridge together. You know, it, it's not a one-way system. This is something that I would really like to emphasize. And how are we doing this? Through field work, but also through training, education activities, outreach, and of course, it's also it's also um, a, sh a social experience, a community experience. Uh, it was difficult to try to pinpoint uh, um, a project that uh, uh, could represent all the varieties of activities that we are actually busy doing. Um, but I'm personally linked to this particular project. Uh, it's Price is Pottery um, in Flintshire. Buckley is the second largest town in Flintshire, uh, with a large variety, uh, different type of population, um, and it's quite significant from the heritage point of view. We have at the moment 31 site, pottery sites identified. Uh, there is still work that we uh, will need to do in order to identify some of the earliest pottery sites. But through the examination of historic documents and based on some uh, works um, that's been done uh, in the 70s, we found out that one of the side potteries was actually lying on uh, the crowd of a high school. Bingo! High school. <laughs> <laughs> it was Christmas. And it actually was a great opportunity because we managed to involve around 360 people over a three weeks period. Not bad. Considering that the actual work in terms of excavation, recording, and practical activities were conducted over a two weeks period. Uh, don't get confused about the numbers. I don't usually like to talk about numbers, but as you all know, uh, on the top of the ladder, they all lost numbers. Uh, but I do rather prefer to look at the outcome. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I work on projects where really I, I can see the impact uh, of what we are doing and what archaeology can really do in, on a group of four young people. Just four. Uh, and I have to say, in some ways, it was even much more rewarding than these large projects. But anyway, uh, so we have 258 students. Uh, so ratio of uh, 50 children a day working on site with us. What did we do? A variety of things. Uh, well, first of all, the importance of the project uh, was on the fact that, uh, yes, it involved young people, but it also involved a large variety of other groups within Buckley. I stressed before this, the fact that uh, there is a large variety in the population. Well, the history of Buckley with the pottery industry, industry uh, stretch over 600 uh, years period. Uh, and we had a lot of people from Ireland and Liverpool moving in the area between the 17th and 19th century. So it was a very varied type of population, so varied that they ended up creating a completely new dialect. Uh, the good thing is we were be able to teach the children about the local dialect involving a local potter who is really, really keen in helping the community to rediscover the local mm. heritage, and it was great. As well, we have the Buckley Society, Local History Society. They tried for a long time to try to reopen a new, win a new window, a new dialogue with the school. Uh, as you can imagine, as uh, most of all the local societies, uh, there are very um, few young members. So this was an opportunity for them to start a new dialogue with the school. And they are currently still busy in preparing an exhibition 
together with uh, with the members of uh, uh, the staff and the school and the school students that have been involved in the project. As well, uh, I'm really proud. These uh, uh, students uh, wasn't too keen on being involved. He came, stayed with us for a work placement experience. He turned out he's a great artist. We don't know how the site looked like. Just based on uh, historic maps and all the information that we found from historical documents, uh, he tried to reproduce and give us a hint of how the prices pottery might have looked like just based on the archaeological evidence from other local sites and the little that we know from the site. So archaeology is a way to develop personal skills, which are not uh, necessarily com directly related to uh, archaeology itself. And this is our community, my community at Buckley. So we have all the key elements, uh, members of the public, uh, the Buckley local, local History Society, members of the staff, uh, and most importantly, the students. Uh, we are going back this year. Uh, I should have mentioned before when I talk about numbers, the project has been funded by CADO, and this year will be funded again uh, by CADO following the, the success of uh, last summer. So just to conclude, uh, community archaeology and engagement, uh, it's not just about caring. Of course, it's our priority, <coughs> caring for heritage and archaeology. But it's also important to understand the social needs, the local needs and uh, what people are expecting from uh, a particular project. Sharing common aims and objectives, it, as I mentioned before, it can be a one-way system. There are two parties involved. And then looking at the future, what next? Don't stop. We never, I, I personally never think of the end of a project as the end of it. There will always be a follow-up. How do we intend to carry on? How can we carry on involving the community? And this is very important, especially in the case of the Kui Pabis Archaeological Trust, covering such a large area. Um, so yeah, it's tough. <laughs> and oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask me questions. Um, but yes, yeah, stop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.